When I first came to Living Waters, I did not think I needed healing. Actually, I thought that I had worked through all of the things in my heart. And I remember sitting in that first session at a Healing the Heart retreat. And I got halfway through listening to the teaching and I heard her talking about the symptoms of a stony heart. Some of those symptoms were guarded and can't be yourself, wear a mask, withdrawn, isolated. And so when she said that, I was thinking, well, I still have some of those symptoms, but I'm, I'm, I'm all right, I'm gonna be all right. Cause in my head, when in my healing journey, I had heard things like, just look forward and keep moving on and everything will be all right. Don't look in the rear view mirror because if you do, you'll get tripped up. And so that's what I was doing. I was focusing on going forward and not looking back. And I also heard things like faith it till you make it. And that is also what I was focusing on as I was moving forward as a speaker and an author. When I had come, I was building my own speaking platform and my own um, being an author. And that was my motto, just keep moving. And I had come to a point where those symptoms that I heard in that first Healing the Heart retreat brought me back to this place where I need to deal with some things. As I was trying to move forward, I was exhausted because I was trying to ignore those stones in my heart that were still there. I think about a year later into my healing journey, I would come back and I would serve in the kitchen and I would come in and sit and listen to some of the teachings and I finally realized that I had a big boulder still in my heart. It was so big and I didn't even realize it was there. I was trying to pretend like everything was okay and perform and people please my way into it being okay. But I would see people come in one way and go out another. People getting freedom. And at one point I was just thinking, you know, Lord, if only you could do that for me. And I came to this point where I wanted healing and I wanted to be able to feel the freedom that I saw other people walking in. And at that point where I came to the end of myself, I was overthinking things and doing things on my own. But at that point, when I surrendered to God, He then came in and He started putting His finger on that big boulder and He started to touch it. You know, Pastor Denise says in some of her teachings, Pain has to be touched to be removed. So that old saying that I was going by, move forward, just go forward and don't look back, didn't work and it didn't cause that pain that was still in there, those stones that were still in there to be dealt with. And so when I allowed God to touch that pain, it helped me be able to surrender the process and cause Him to help me work through some of those things. You know, we talk about, you know, the symptoms of the stony heart. And one of the things that you need to, to know to be able to work on the things that are still in our heart is the fruit, the symptoms that we're still dealing with. You see, I was trying to ignore the symptoms. I was going by the don't talk, don't feel, and don't trust rule. And so that caused me to ignore and minimize what I was feeling. But when we recognize those places that we are still stuck and we are still struggling and we're honest with ourselves and with God, then God can touch it and He can help us work through it. We have this saying also, look at the fruit. When you track from fruit to root, it will help you sort through and be able to deal with the stones that are in your heart. On Saturday morning at a Healing the Heart retreat, we talk about all of these principles, the from the fruit to the root and 
looking at the stones. And one of the things that really helps with dismantling that stony heart, that wall up around our heart, is being able to look at one stone at a time. You know, I was always trying to feel God's love and hear His voice better, but I realized that that wall up around my heart actually was what was causing me not to hear Him or feel Him. Ephesians 1.18 says, And I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which He has called you to. The divine guarantee and confident expectation that it's talking about in this scripture is only recognized when we can hear God's voice, we can feel Him, and we spend that time with Him. And that means we need to take down that wall around our heart and deal with the stones so that we can do that and allow the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit to come into those places. See, if the core of our being is blocked up, you know, think about an apple tree. The trunk of the tree is the core, right? And if the core of that trunk of the tree, if our lives represented an apple tree, when we're planted in the soil that we're planted in, whether that be in church, our people groups, our word that we're reading each morning, in, every morning, all of the nutrients in our soil that we're trying to get up the trunk of our tree and up to the top of our foliage. If it's blocked up and it is, has a stony heart in the core, in the trunk of our tree, then what happens to those nutrients? Those nutrients get stuck and it can't go up the trunk of the tree and into the top of the tree, into the foliage, into the fruit. So our fruit starts to become rotten. When I was a little girl, I would go to Sunday school class and I would sit there listening to the Sunday, Sunday school teacher and they would talk about the fruits of the spirit. And that would be my bar. See, I was a performer. I wanted to please God the same way I please people. And so I would try to strive and reach those fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, self-control, all of those fruits of the Spirit. The harder I tried, the worse my fruit got. Because I would hear in the back of my head, you're not good enough. You're a failure. You can't even please God. And so when I was looking at my fruit and I was looking at what I could do better, it just made it worse. But when we look at the fruit and we trace it to the root and know that the core of our being, if it's blocked up, we need to deal with that so that the nutrients in our soil can get up to the fruit in our lives. And so that we can produce the good fruit and the fruits of the Spirit that God wants us to produce and have that freedom in the life that He wants us to have. So in order to do that, we have to look at the, those, the wall of stones around our heart. And the wall of stones are made up of many stones. Each time we experience pain as a child and we push it down and not deal with it, we don't talk about it, those stones are built over time. Pain by pain, stone by stone, it creates that wall. So when we're going through healing, we have to do it the same way that they were created, one stone at a time. And when we look at one stone at a time, the best way to be able to start dismantling the wall around our heart is to take it and divide the stone into four different parts. And I'm going to just talk briefly about these four different parts so that you can start to break your stones into the four different parts and start dismantling each stone one at a time. We talk about this extensively in the retreat and you can also visit some of the teachings by Pastor Denise Boggs about the stony heart. And we also have books that you can order on livingwatersministry.com to go further into what we're talking about here. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to talk about the four different parts. 
So part number one is called event or the pain or the disappointment. So whatever you went through, whatever happened when it caused the stone to, to occur, that is the first part of the stone. It's very important that you recognize, and when you come to a retreat, we have you label your stones with a name. Naming your stone helps you be able to overcome it. And so whatever that is, so for me, this boulder that I talked talk to you about was a boulder that actually happened when I was four years old. Let me tell you a little bit about it so you can understand, and I'll break my stone down so you can break yours down. I'll be the example. So. When I was four years old, my dad left unexpectedly. I woke up in the morning and he was gone. And so I was looking for my dad. He was my hero. I stayed with him during the day and he took care of us. But this morning, my mom was rushing us out the door to go to the babysitter's house. And so he wasn't around and I, it caused some stones because no one was talking about it. And it was causing me to feel lonely and abandoned. But that wasn't what this boulder was. This boulder happened a little while later when my dad showed up unexpectedly at my great grandparents' house. And he was back again and I was seeing him, I was happy. And that night after dinner, he was leaving again. He gets up from the dinner table and he says, well, I guess I gotta be going now. And he gets up and he starts walking towards the door. And I started crying. I lost it. I'm four. And I did not want my dad to go out that door again and leave me again. So I have tears streaming down my face, trying to get him to see me and hear me. And I jumped up on this great big circular ottoman in the middle of the living room floor because he's six foot tall and I'm a four-year-old, really short. So I jumped up on that ottoman and I'm looking at my dad with the tears running down my face and I'm telling him, Daddy, don't leave. And he looks at me and he wipes those tears away and he said, baby girl, you gotta be a big girl. You gotta take care of your mom and your brother. I gotta be going now. And as he wipes the tears from my face, I realize that if I feel, if I have emotion, then I'm gonna disappoint my dad. And I'm gonna disappoint those people that were significant to me. And so in that moment when he's wiping my tears off and saying that I had to be a big girl, I started to realize that don't feel rule. Well, you know what happens when you don't feel and you don't talk about things and you don't trust that those stones get pushed down like we talked about earlier. And so that next morning, I wake up and my grandmother is talking to me about something very significant that was taking place and she wanted to prepare my heart. But my little girl heart did not know how to handle what she was saying. Because of the night before, I realized I couldn't feel my grandmother when she said what she said, she said, your dad is gonna have another little girl soon another baby girl that's going to be daddy's little girl. You're not gonna be daddy's little girl anymore. You gotta be the big girl. Now, when I heard that, this stone formed because I couldn't feel, I couldn't talk because I didn't wanna disappoint. And so that's why it was hidden. That's why I didn't know it was there when I came to that first retreat. But when we talk about the symptoms, when we talk about the fruit, when we start to realize that we have to look at those things and not ignore them anymore. And like I said, I had come to the end of myself and I wanted God to help me work through whatever was causing me not to be free. And so as he started to touch the stone, he started reminding me of what I felt that day. And I called this stone replaced because I felt replaced. I felt replaced by my little sister in my dad's heart. So this top part of the stone would be called replaced. And so over here on this other part of the stone, that 
part is where we recognize the feelings and the lies that we believe. Did you know that the feelings that we feel, the negative feelings that we feel, are from the enemy? And the negative feelings that are contrary to the Word of God, those are generated by a lie that we believed. And that's, an, that's right there a very important point because I was believing all these lies about having to work hard to not be replaced. I, I wasn't worth anything unless I worked really hard and was the best so that people wouldn't replace me. And those lies that we believe are so important on helping us get set free from the things that we're dealing with. So these feelings will indicate, and sometimes the feelings even sound like the lie. So when we hear, when we feel the feelings and we hear that in our heads, that voice in our heads, it's really important to recognize what is, is it the truth? And if it's a negative feeling, it very well could be that it's a lie. And so we have to deal with those lies that we believe. And I remember one lie that I believed. And as I asked the Holy Spirit and see, we can ask God to help us recognize the lies that we believe. As we ask the Holy Spirit to help us recognize it, because see, we believe lies so much because they were pushed down and they are part of who we are. And so they become our truth. It becomes who we are. And if we don't ask the Holy Spirit to help us, ask God to help us recognize what is from Him and what is from a lie that we believed from something that, we, something that happened, then He can help us recognize those lies. And when He puts His finger on it and He said, that is a lie, I was set free from the lie that I believed. And so the lies and the feelings are really important and it allows that enlightenment to come into the core of our being, to be able to turn the light on in those dark places of our heart. And so as we deal with those lies, it will cause freedom. Now down here on the lower part of the stone, over here is judgments and over here our vows. So we've got judgments and vows. And so I didn't know I was making judgments and vows as a kid, but judgments and vows will keep us stuck in cycles. You can go on and find the videos that Pastor Denise Boggs has done on bitter root judgments, and you can get a better idea of what judgments and vows are. But let me tell you just a little bit about judgments and vows. Judgments are talked about in Matthew 7, 1 through 2. It says, judge not lest you be judged, for in the manner you judge others, it'll come back on you. It's like a boomerang effect. So if you judge someone, whatever you judge someone about, it shows up later on down the road. As you step into that same season, it can spring up. When I was a little girl, I used to judge my mom for yelling. She would yell a lot. And as a little girl, my heart would feel that. And it would be, I would feel unstable. I would feel scared. I would feel pain. And in my little girl's heart, I looked at my mom and I saw her face and I heard her voice and I judged her for yelling. And I said to myself, I will never do that. And when I stepped up into adulthood, into parenthood, see, my mom was yelling at me, and then I stepped into parenthood, being a mom myself, that boomerang came back. And so I was yelling at my children, and I could not stop until I recognized that I judged my mom for the very same thing. Now, Later on in Matthew 7, it talks about judging them by their fruit, judging people by their fruit. And that may get a little confusing, but let me explain. When we judge someone by their fruit, as an adult, we know better than to judge a person. As a child, we don't. 
So when we're judging the fruit, say we step into a group of coworkers and they're talking bad about the boss or they're gossiping, we know by that fruit that that's not good fruit, right? So we know how to respond to that and we step out of that group of gossiping and and we don't participate in that same fruit. So we're just judging the fruit of a person, not the person and the fruit. As a little girl, I didn't know not to judge my mom. I didn't know that that pain that I was experiencing was causing me to judge my mom, raising myself above her and looking down on her, and I was dishonoring her by judging her and I didn't realize it. But when I recognized as an adult that I was doing the same thing, we recognize the judgments by the cycles that we're in. I was in a cycle of yelling, 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 and I couldn't stop it until I recognized the judgment. Now, the vow part of the stone is right here. It's right next to the judgment. Judgments and vows go hand in hand. Judgments and vows generally are made together because the judgment is the pain and the judging of the person and what they're doing, but the vow is that promise. Like I said, I said, when I was experiencing my mom yelling, I will never do that. That's the vow. Proverbs 20, 24 through 25 says this, says man's steps are ordered and ordained by the Lord. How then can a man fully understand his ways? It is a trap for a man to speak a vow of consecration and say rashly. So if you're speaking a vow like I did, and I said, I will never do that. I will never yell at my kids. But what happens when we do a vow, when we say a vow, whether it be in our heart, with our mouth, we start ordering our own steps. And when we order our own steps, it kind of blocks God out. It blocks God out from helping us accomplish that thing that we said we would never do because we vowed that we would do it. So we are stuck in that promise that we made doing, ordering our own steps. And so it causes us to do it all by ourselves. And you know, It might sound like a really good thing to say, I will never abuse my kids. That's another vow that I made. I will never yell at my kids. That sounds like a really good thing to say. And it is. It's a really good goal. So when we utter a vow or make a vow in our hearts as a kid, as an adult, we're trying to accomplish that thing that we promised to ourselves but we're doing it all by ourselves. And when we invite God into it, we break the vow, invite God into it, He can help us accomplish that thing that we don't wanna do so much better than if we're doing it all by ourselves in our own strength. So I hope that helped you a little bit to see how to take one stone at a time and process through those stones. If you want further help looking into how to deal with stones in your heart, in the stony heart. I would suggest going on livingwatersministry.com, the website, and look at the books. And there's a book, a booklet that is called Stony Heart. It'll help you work through it. Um, Also, there's other videos that Pastor Denise Boggs has done that you can watch to get more information. If you still have questions, I would email main at livingwaters.com ministry.us. Hi, I'm Denise Engelbrecht, and I am so excited to tell you about a new healing opportunity that is coming to Living Waters Ministry. We are putting together an online course that is self-paced, which means that you will be able to go through your healing process whenever you have time. So if you have been to a Healing the Heart retreat or an online Zoom class, This is the perfect opportunity to reinforce what you've already learned in those spaces. But if you've never been to Healing the Heart Retreat or any of our classes, you can still sign up and this will take you through your healing journey from beginning to end and you will be able to experience that in your own home. 
This self-paced course will have a video where Pastor Denise Boggs is explaining and teaching you each chapter one at a time. After the videos, it will take you into each of the chapters of Healing and Restoring the Heart book where you can read the chapter and then it will give you thought-provoking questions to help you process deeper and be able to learn about those places in your heart that needs healing. As you go through your assignments, we will have a Q&A Zoom where you can ask questions and you can process with one of our team so that you can learn more and be able to feel that support of someone helping you through your healing journey. Hello everyone. I want to share with you another powerful resource that's available to you to help you work through some of the issues that you may be struggling with or you may be dealing with even in your marriage. And that resource is called Healing a Stony Heart. Did you know you can have a stony heart and not even be aware of it? And the way you know where there's a stone or a hardened place in your heart, maybe your, your whole heart's not hardened, but there's just one little area. That's why it's called stony heart, is what causes you to get offended. What is, an, is a trigger that causes you to get so upset and offended? And then, where do you overreact? Areas where you overreact out of being triggered indicates that there is an area right there in your heart where you've been hurt before. Someone hurt you. And out of your own self-protection, you just closed your heart. I'm not going to let that hurt me again but unaware that that, that area where your heart's closed has created a stone, a hardened place, because it takes love flowing to keep the heart open in every area. But if you're guarded in an area, that's another indicator, you've got a stony heart, you've got a stone there, and that will block the flow of love. You can't flow if there's a guardedness. And some marriages, both husband and wife have to recognize stones in their heart. My husband and I had to because we both came into the marriage with hurt from our childhood growing up. So we were guarded in certain areas and we couldn't share our heart with each other. So I want to encourage you to get this resource, Healing a Stony Heart. Go to our website and order Healing a Stony Heart. It's going to help you tremendously. If Living Waters has been a blessing to you and you would like to help support this ministry, you can give on our website, livingwatersministry.com slash donate or text any amount to 84321. We have additional resources for you to continue on your journey to healing in our online bookstore. 